well, I guess this is a thing that I'm obligated to do. Well, not really, because for the most part, this is something I've wanted to talk about for a long time anyway. I don't think it's any secret that Halo 5's story is a complete and utter disaster from start to finish. And frankly, anyone that disagrees with that general sentiment is one of the three following things. One, they're fucking dumb. Two, they're fucking dumb. Or three, they're fucking dumb. Dumb. As someone who prides myself in my diverse array of reading material that takes at least some level of cognitive thought or intelligence to get through, as well as taking multiple high school and college courses in creative writing and even more so someone that's hard at work pretty much every day writing my own book, I can definitively say that the story of Halo 5 Guardians is a fucking travesty. Indisputably, this is the worst story in any Halo game to date. Previously, that position was held by none other than Halo fucking Reach, the game that took what was easily one of the most unique science fiction novels of all time and threw it out the fucking window wherein it plummeted to the street and murdered a small brown child. Take that, Black Lives Matter. But even that game had a more competent and compelling narrative than this failed abortion of a plot. All thanks to the one, the only, the fat, the not so fabulous, Brian fucking read. Why in the merciful living fuck 343 thought it would be a good idea to hire this guy to write anything absolutely surpasses my small realm of fucking comprehension. Because anyone that did even half a second of research into this guy would have never been like, hey, you seem completely unlikable and infamous in every respect. Want to come write the story for one of the most influential shooters of all time developed by a company that at this point nobody likes? Yes. Yes, I do. I really fucking do. The sad part being that while that conversation probably didn't go exactly like that, in the background, that was literally exactly what happened. Now, personally, I liked Halo 4. The campaign was linear as fuck and entirely too easy once you learned how to kill the Prometheans effectively, but at the end of the day, the plot utilized the lore from Bungie in a meaningful way, didn't really do anything that went against the already established canon, and just picked up exactly where Bungie left off, telling an effective and surprisingly emotional story. If Halo 4's multiplayer Forge and Spartanops didn't suck major goat asshole, then Halo 4 would have, in my opinion, been the best way to end the series. Sure, the level design could have been done much better, sure it could have been longer, the didact could have been better, and the characters could have had a little bit more screen time, but Master Chief completing his mission, returning home, and lamenting the loss of his one last best friend while hanging up his armor to step down seemed like a great way to wrap up his story arc. Unfortunately, 343 likes the idea of piggybacking off the success of a company that used to be really good and wanted that sweet Cortana a pussy, I, I mean, Microsoft Cash. Here's the thing, I'm typically very against sequels. You should go into a game, movie, book, or show with the idea of making one addition. If you think that you might want a sequel in the future, you should leave the ending open in such a way where the audience can be content with the ending, but not irritated if a sequel comes out. Or at least if it sucks, you won't be leaving it in a cliffhanger. For example, Star Wars A New Hope did just that. Same with Dune, Alien, Hell, even Halo Combat Evolved. Sure, you can have an idea in your mind that you're fairly certain and will last much longer, but it's typically not a good idea to say, yeah, new trilogy and everything. We all knew that Halo 5 was coming out, and to be honest, the E3 reveal trailer hyped the shit out of me. The phenomenal marketing campaign made me all the more excited and engrossed in this world. I was ready for a revolutionary Halo story, but the game disappointed me almost as much as when Bernie lost the primary to the Reptilian Queen. What we got was the single worst story since Gears of War, filled to the brim with plot holes, cliches, awful structuring, and the absolute worst character character development I've ever seen in my life. Halo 5 makes it known that this series has become a gigantic fucking joke. So, now that I have your attention, let's get into all the reasons why this game's story fucking sucks. While there's certainly a lot more that goes into it, we really have to analyze the main plot first. Halo 5 takes place several months after the events of Halo 4's Spartan Ops mode. We're given a short monologue by Dr. Halsey about what'll happen to her and someone else once everything is over. Saying that Oni, a company that you can basically think of as Wayland Utani, Umbrella Corps, RDA, or InGen of the Halo universe, will kill her in what I think is meant to be Cortana, which in context makes absolutely no sense at all. 
all, and furthermore is never brought up again for the entire rest of the game. In fact, that whole cutscene has absolutely no reason to exist whatsoever. Ironically, the game doesn't either. Then we get into the big reveal of Fireteam Osiris. Three of the characters are new, one of them is old, being Buck from Halo 3 ODST. If you recall, Buck was an ODST, not a Spartan. Why is he a Spartan in this game? Well, don't expect the game to tell you. Go read the books instead. They'll have all your questions answered. Hold on to that thought. I got entirely too much shit to talk about on that front. So they all fly down to an indescript planet to fight Covenant and Prometheans. The cutscene is fucking awesome and shows off the sheer power of the Spartans in a way that no other Halo game has truly captured. We get into the gameplay and, surprisingly enough, it's not half bad. Despite my previous concerns that it would be too much like Call of Duty, it still plays very much like a Halo game, but with a kind of crisis-like spin to it. And me being a huge fan of the Crisis games, I quickly fell in love with the new abilities brought to the table here. Unfortunately, nothing of real worth happens in this mission. If anything, it makes you have to take a double take and ask yourself, really? That's it? There are three major points in this mission that left me scratching my head. First off, the team is looking for Halsey, who's captured by Jewel Emdama, the antagonist of Halo 4 Spartan Ops. They mention that the Prometheans turned against Jewel, but at the end of Spartan Ops, they seem like completely good friends. That's something that's never explained. Second, one of them asks about Halsey's arm missing, and the new protagonist, Locke, dismisses it as saying Jewel did it, but doesn't give enough of a fuck to figure out why. I noticed in the briefing, Dr. Halsey lost her left arm. When did that happen? Jewel did it. No idea when or why. Reckon it wasn't an argument, or he'd have cut off her head instead of her arm. Well, first off, Jewel didn't do it. Palmer shot her arm off in Spartan Ops. If anything, Jewel is the only reason Halsey is still alive to begin with. Also, this is the first clue in the game that absolutely nothing from Spartan Ops matters at all. Every major plot point that arose in Spartan Ops was written out of the game. Admittedly, it was not a popular mode to begin with, disgustingly linear, boring, uninteresting in every regard, and the only fun part was the cutscenes. Absolutely zero fucks were given whatsoever in regards to the continuity of the source material. And what's even worse is that the only way to find out why the Prometheans turned on Jewel, why things are the way they are, and why nothing from Spartan Ops matters anymore, or why Fire Team Osiris is even a thing, is to read some of the most boring, lazy, disgustingly illustrated comics in history. But again, we'll touch on that later. So what's the third point I referenced? Well, the rest of the mission isn't really important. We get to the end where the most boring, groan-inducing action sequence ever plays out. Jewel M. Dama, the big bad elite that was played so much in Spartan Ops in the Kilo 5 books, a villain that was even somewhat relatable given the circumstances of his actions, is killed off in literally like five seconds, puts up no fight at all, and is killed off in the first 20 minutes of the game. Right off the bat, no regard for this villain is given at all. It's amazing to me that 343 could give this little of a shit about their own villain. Anyway, they all return to Infinity and Halsey is taken away by Lasky and Palmer, who are eerily quiet. Halsey asks, what has she done? And if you picked up any of the easter eggs in the level, you'd hear even more references to this mysterious she. It takes approximately zero brain cells to figure out who she is. Cortana is back. First mission, confirmed, she's back. All of the emotion that went into Halo 4, hell, the entire point of Halo 4, is now thrown out of the window entirely because 343 is probably the most pussy-ass company on Earth, and they straight up refuse to take risks without immediately backtracking. In terms of multiplayer and Forge, backtracking was necessary, but negating entire plot details that were actually good for the purpose of making people happy? I hate bringing characters back from the dead. While it can work Sometimes, I feel like it ruins the beauty and emotion in well-constructed scenes like Halo 4's ending. There were people that cried during it. The first time in any Halo game where a major character was killed off and it actually elicited genuine emotional responses. But no, the first level of the next game and she's already back. Thanks, 343. That's totally not just a gigantic fuck you to everyone that gave enough of a shit to pay attention. Anyway, next mission. We open up with Master Chief, who's headed toward an abandoned ship called Argent Moon. If you take the time to listen to the audio logs here, the story of Argent Moon is actually quite fascinating and cool to listen to, reminding me a lot of Mass Effect missions. But let's put that aside and focus on the major glaring problem here. 
blue team. Now, I had no problem with blue team in the game at all, but with zero introduction, you realize that the only way you'd know who these people are is if you read The Fall of Reach, right? Because no game has ever mentioned them. The back of the Halo 3 case straight up says that Master Chief is, quote, the last Spartan. People who aren't diehard fans that read the books will look at this and ask themselves, who in the fuck are these guys? And even if you do know who they are, unless you read the piece of shit comics, you wouldn't know how Blue Team was ever reunited. I went into Halo 5 with no fucking clue what happened that brought them all back together. Hell, there wasn't even an explanation as to what they were all doing in the original games or even in Halo 4. They were all just here. So basically, Argent Moon serves as an introduction to Blue Team, and it utterly fails because throughout this entire game, all of them, even Chief, is completely unlikable. So, Chief falls down something and sees a vision of Cortana saying to go to Meridian. He wakes up somewhere and insists that they all go look for her. Okay, Chief has lost his mind, but yeah, let's, let's go search for Cortana despite having zero evidence to back up that this vision was even halfway legitimate, which is even further delegitimized by the fact that she was zapped into the ether of nothingness and then promptly nuked. The fact that she's back at all not only makes zero sense whatsoever, but is also possibly the worst thing that has ever been called writing since the Final Fantasy VIII Orphanage plot twist. So they tell Infinity they're gonna go look for her, but apparently Lasky already knows everything and says no, but Chief gives a giant fuck you to Lasky and leaves anyway. Yeah, it's kind of shitty that he's treating Lasky like ass after he fucking helped Chief out multiple times in Halo 4. Isn't it kind of a bad move to turn your back on your only real fucking animal? I left. Anyway, back to Infinity. Roland gets pissed off because he cares about Cortana for some reason, but to my knowledge, he never even met her. Why in the all-living fuck does he give even half a shit about this AI that died that he never met? Oh, and Lasky is also completely unlikable in this game. You can just see the pain in his eyes in this game. Like, all the quirky charisma he had in Halo 4 has just vanished. Remember when he gave Chief the Pelican directly defying orders in order to help Chief because he was the only one that believed in him? Don't tell me you didn't didn't start smiling right then and there, right when you realized that Lasky was actually a really cool dude. While in this game, he's probably the most unlikable, uncharismatic, uninteresting characters in history. He does absolutely nothing of value ever and doesn't even make the slightest attempt to help Chief, much less even talk to him. Anyway, Osiris goes to Meridia and there's some Prometheans there. The mission was actually kind of cool because we've never seen a glass planet before, but beyond the visual aesthetic, it's basically just more stupid shit. There's a guns down mission too that feels like it really should have just been a cutscene, but instead only served to pad out this painfully short game. So Osiris goes to a mine and one of them points out that Chief never fought any Prometheans. Okay, first of all, that theory was pulled straight out of her ass. There is zero evidence to support that claim whatsoever. Second, that theory actually turns out to be correct. But what annoys me is the fact that even though she is right, that theory came out of nowhere and will be negated in the next chief mission anyway. So they go into a chamber and they fight the Warden Eternal. This thing makes no sense. So I think he's supposed to be a forerunner, but he doesn't look or act anything like one. Previously, we saw the Didact, the Librarian, and in the terminals, other forerunners, and there wasn't anything about this fucking guy. So he says Chief can go through the door, but not lock. So they shoot him in the face until he leaves, and then they enter another chamber and find a giant robot. And so they find Chief, and then Locke and Chief do a fight that's hideously choreographed and can be basically summarized as two fat guys fighting over a cheeseburger. Then Chief takes out a pancake and uses it to freeze Locke, and then he enters the Reaper, I... I mean, the, uh, the Guardian. And then they all leave and almost die, and then the planet pseudo-explodes and they all escape, and then Halsey says there's another Guardian on the Elite homeworld. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'm calling the Guardians Reapers, because that's what they really are. They even make the same stupid sound effect. But then we meet with Chief and the gang on the new planet. There's a reference to the call in the books that only book readers would know, and then they fight the Warden for no reason, and then Cortana helps them fight Prometheans. Okay, so the Prometheans let them through the first time and took them there, but now they're against them being there. Anyway, Cortana says the Domain cured her rampancy. First off, you would not know what the Domain is unless you read the books. Second, how did an AI that was incinerated and then nuked end up at a previously undiscovered planet? Chief even makes it seem like the Didax ship just jumped into slip space at the end of Halo 4, but he clearly nuked it. Anyway, nothing else of value happens here. Let's go back to Locke and the gang. So basically, they have to go to the Sanghealy homeworld. Now, I can't rail on them too much for this because the game's 
games have mentioned that the elites are called Singheli, and the game manuals have called them that too. So the Arbiter is at war with the Covenant, and they all go to save him. Arbiter is now really boring. He has no cool lines, does nothing of value, and only kind of voices our hatred for Locke and his team. There are also two more guns down missions that pad out the shit that we should have seen in the cutscene. Then there's a mission where we fight a giant crab, but that really doesn't matter. Actually, most of these Sangheili missions don't matter at all. Then we go to Kamino, where Tanaka makes this horrible, terrible, disgustingly written line that literally embodies the very meaning of the word cringe. Come a long way together. Long way yet to go. Let's make a good jump like we mean to. And handle fools like we need to. Brian Reed, you are the stupidest man on the face of the earth. How anyone, anywhere, could possibly think that this is a good line that they should have kept in the game is absolutely beyond me. Nobody speaks brown feminazi, Brian. Nobody. Anyway, so the Reaper comes out of the ocean, then Palmer and Halsey fly them onto the Reaper, and then they're shot down and somehow survive, despite Halsey only having one arm, and they're in the middle of the fucking ocean. Then they're teleported to the planet Chief is on and jump down the Reaper in an admittedly fucking awesome set piece, and then they find a character from an Arbiter 617 machinima. Seriously, this monitor genuinely feels like it's ripped out of a YouTuber fan figure. Just compare Arbiter 617's Rise of the Spartans to this character. This game is pretty much gigantic fan fiction, if you ask me. So they kill more wardens. Oh yeah, they've killed like six of them at this point. And then we find Chief, who somehow, out of nowhere, has discovered that Cortana is evil. What? When and how did you learn that? Then Cortana teleports them away, and then we fight in the laziest level in Halo history. Then we fight three wardens at once, giving us a grand total of fighting the same lazy boss nine fucking times. Then Cortana appears, and it turns out she's a fucking tranny. Then Linda tries to get out of the friend zone, and then Chief puts her right back in it. Then Chief tries to make Cortana turn back to her straight ways, and Cortana freezes them in a giant golf ball, all the while Chief reaching for that sweet holographic ass. Then Locke has to save them, and they kill the things in the snow, and then they beat the Reapers, then they do a hug. Then they somehow find a way off that uncharted planet with no transportation or communication with anyone or anything and meet Halsey and Arbiter on saying Helios while Cortana nukes the universe. Then Halsey has a very touching and heartbreaking reunion, and by touching I mean completely hollow. It took you long enough. Oh, and while I'm at it, apparently the Infinity just up and abandoned Palmer and Halsey on saying Helios and went to... to... Is that fucking Coruscant? Then Cortana EMPs it and they run away and Lasky does his Lasky face. Then the game ends. And the legendary ending shows off a halo, which doesn't matter because people at this point are sitting back in their chairs thinking to themselves, Wow. That really sucked. Oh yeah, and the game is only four hours long! Oh, this game was an absolute mess. Everything from start to finish was a travesty, and that's putting it really lightly. The plot was jumbled and all over the place, lacking any form of general cohesion or consistency. There were serious holes in that Cortana's entire survival story makes zero sense. The Didact's disappearance is questionable, Blue Team's involvement is out of nowhere, and Cortana's sudden change in personality is absolutely retarded. Especially since what she's currently doing completely goes against her character in every way possible. The character development was non-existent. Locke was just as uninteresting and wholly unlikable as ever, and somehow even Chief, the easiest character to write ever, turned out to be a fucking idiot that pulled shit out of his ass and failed to use even the most basic form of common sense. The campaign was offensively short, there were only three Chief missions, all of which were not particularly fun, the boss was used way too much, level design was only slightly better than Halo 4's, the visuals were ass because apparently 343 doesn't give a shit about lighting, shading, or anti-aliasing, the story insults the player's intelligence, and the game leaves off on a pathetic cliffhanger that fails to make me give a shit about the sequel. Now I'm fine with cliffhangers, Halo 2 made me excited to fight the Covenant and the Flood one last time, 
or at least what I wish was the last time. The Hobbit Desolation of Smaug had a horrible cliffhanger, but it sure as shit got me back into the theaters to see the final movie. Game of Thrones has god-awful cliffhangers in almost every episode in existence, but they still get me coming back every single time. Halo 5, however, isn't even structured in such a way that the cliffhanger makes sense. Not only are there very obvious portions of the campaign that feel like something was deliberately cut out, but it feels like the climax of the story hasn't even occurred yet. The game feels like the first act to a story that was never finished. It would be like reading The Fellowship of the Ring and abandoning it halfway after Gandalf falls off the bridge of Khazad Doom. It's kind of like Brian Reed wrote the first three chapters of a story and then skipped to chapter 75. The entire middle act was practically non-existent, and just as always, Brian Reed ends with an apocalyptic scenario that feels entirely too forced. This is the same shit they did in Spartan Ops. If you recall, it ends with Halsey finding the key to all Forerunner technology ever. Like, where do you go with that? That means that humanity literally can take over the universe. So remember how I said that Spartan Ops was pretty much written out of the game? Well, after reading these incredibly inconsistent comics, you'll discover that the key came together to open a portal to a place where they could find all the Forerunner technology ever. Well, that gets destroyed somehow, and they all just go their separate ways. So basically, Spartan Ops is utterly irrelevant, as are the comics for that matter. Oh, but do you want to know what happens to the Didact? Well, he teleported some else, Chief has a hollow and unemotional reunion with Blue Team, and then they find the Didact, and then they use, like, ten composers on him. According to Brian Reed, he's not dead, and he'll come back at some point, but he was written out of the story. Speaking of Brian Reed, this big comic collection that seriously should have come with the last two issues, at least, is like some kind of sick foreshadowing for everything wrong that Brian would do in Halo 5. His notes about how things are good character development are literally retarded. This man has absolutely no sense in how to write anything at all. He doesn't have the slightest idea how to go about character development, he doesn't really seem to give a shit about characters and their story arcs, and what's even worse is that he has an ego like no other. He literally blocked people that called him out on his poor writing and used the dumbass excuse that Halo 5's story was too deep. Brian, the only depth involved here is just how deep of a fucking echo chamber you've dug for yourself. You can't just ignore legitimate criticism of your piss-ass writing and brush it off as being too deep. You're not on par with Interstellar. You haven't written the next Song of Ice and Fire in The Lord of the Rings. You aren't the spiritual successor of Frank Herbert. You haven't devised a story worth a damn. Gears of War, the game I regarded as having the single worst story in any modern game ever, is eons superior to the incompetent garbage that is Halo 5. So, why exactly is Halo 5 so bad? What led to its horrific descent into whatever the hell this is supposed to be? Well, one of the biggest issues is undoubtedly the inclusion of external source material. Ever since Halo Reach, really, Halo has had a serious issue with including material outside of the games and not giving them proper explanations within the menus. Halo Reach including Dr. Halsey as a character is all good and fine, but there's never any explanation for who she is. Halo 4 in particular had six whole books, as well as a mini web series that were pretty much required to experience before going into Halo 4. Now granted, I think 343 did a good job of explaining the bare bones ideas of the Didact and the Forerunners and the Terminals, which were accessible in game, but the mantle of responsibility, the domain, the creation of the Halos, the concept of shield worlds, and a few other elements still confused a lot of people. Halo 5's primary issue beyond its just general bad writing is the fact that even me, someone who's played Halo since 2002, a die-hard fan of the franchise since the very beginning, was literally sending out tweets on the night Halo 5 came out saying that nothing in the game made any fucking sense. Sure, I understood the main plot, even though it was stupid as hell, but I'd only ever read The Fall of Reach first strike in evolutions. Going into Halo 5 was a literary hell. I had no concept of what these ancient Forerunner things are, nor did the game adequately explain them, and threw terminals away for stupid audio logs that added absolutely nothing to the experience. Look, I have no problem with external material. Sometimes it really enriches the lore. For example, George R. R. Martin wrote multiple books that expanded on the lore in A Song of Ice and Fire that added meaningful information that made me understand the factions, families, and leaders in events much better. My favorite book of all time, Metro 2033, was written well before the games were ever made. 
and though I personally think the book is much better, it wasn't necessary for me to understand the story of the game by reading the book. But for an even bigger example, let's look at The Witcher. The books were written literal decades before the games came out, and the games reference the books a lot without giving these references much, if any, explanation whatsoever. It's not necessary to read the books in order to understand what happened in the games, but in order to figure out what these characters are referencing, you do need to read the books. Now, I'm sure someone's going to point out I'm contradicting myself by giving leeway to The Witcher for doing that, but not doing it for Halo. The problem is, Metro 2033 and The Witcher were written long before the games came out. In the case of The Witcher, the games were actually sequels to the books. The first game takes place after the events of the final book, which still hasn't been properly translated to English yet. After completing the games, I immediately bought all the books and I love them. They're surprisingly hilarious, have fantastic action, and the characters are simply phenomenal. Though some things get lost in translation, such as descriptions for monsters, they add to the experience of the games. Halo, however, started off as a game, the first book not coming out until a month and a half after the first game, which was really meant to explain who Chief was, who the Spartans are, and what Reach was. Sure, there was a good number of people that read it, but there was also a good number of people that hadn't, even to this day. While I strongly encourage people read books like Metro 2033, The Witcher, and even The Fall of Reach itself, you have to respect the fact that there are people that don't enjoy reading. You can't just make it a blatant requirement to read the books to understand things in a video game. You wouldn't know who Jewel M. Dama is at all unless you read the Kilo 5 trilogy, which is unfortunately written by the worst, most boring author I have ever had to suffer through since the bitch that wrote Twilight. Karen Travis is basically the feminazi edition of Brian Reed, which I guess makes him comparatively decent, and somehow managed to make a series about the Republic Commandos from Star Wars stupid as shit, and even made Order 66 boring. How the fuck do you make Order 66 boring? Boring. As usual, her Halo books, just like her Star Wars and Gears of War books, all suck. The only good part of them is showing who Jewel is and why he does what he does. Turns out, he's actually relatable. His wife and family were murdered. He was imprisoned and tortured by the UNSC pretty much for being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and just wants payback for what the Arbiter and Humanity did to him. But you wouldn't know that unless you read three really bad books. The Forerunner trilogy is actually okay. It takes a couple times to understand everything perfectly, but for the most part, I really liked it. It adequately explains everything about the Forerunners and their technology, which is never explained in Halo 5. The comics show how Chief was reunited, but it sucked and the comics were made irrelevant anyway. New Blood tells the story of Fluff becoming a Spartan, because apparently June from Reach, the worst character in that entire fucking game that no one in their right mind should give any level of a shit about, hired him to become a Spartan after Mickey betrays everyone and kills the Rookie. It frankly embarrasses me that people found that to be sad. The Rookie did absolutely nothing. How do you become emotionally attached to a character that does absolutely nothing? And then these other books just really don't matter much. Now, it's all good and fine to have external source material, but when Halo began as a game, you can't expect people to sit down and read all these books to understand what's happening in the sequel. That would be like seven Star Wars books being released before Episode 8 showing Rey's training by Luke. Like, no, you can't do that shit. You can't just force people to use external material to understand everything else. While better than the incredibly linear layout of Halo 4, Halo 5's level design sucks, but it's also good. Let me explain. My favorite Halo campaign to date is Halo 3. Not only did they tell a great story, coupled with a fantastic soundtrack, memorable characters, over-the-top events, and excellent gameplay, but they also implemented a sandbox feel of the game, whether it was taking on a giant scarab in a multitude of different ways, chances to take on enemies from a large variety of ways with an even larger variety of vehicles and weapons, Halo 5 does this in much the same way, and in that sense, I like the way the campaign plays. However, the rest of the elements of the campaign fall completely flat. The levels are incredibly linear, and even though there's more rots to take, take on than that of the last several Halo games, it really just serves to grant the illusion of a non-linear environment. There's very few ways you can go about playing this game. Even vehicular combat fails to bring a whole lot of variety. You're still going to go for the mantis when you see it. You're still going to grab the sniper and rocket. You're still going to rush certain areas where you know weapons are placed. And you're still going to lean toward the same tactics as usual. You can't even really challenge yourself in different ways beyond intentionally using weapons that aren't good. 343 clearly wanted to add pulse 
puzzles in non-linear environments that would grant many more ways to play the game, but the puzzles are pathetic beyond the bounds of reason. The bigger areas only end up feeling boring because after so many instances of the same run-and-gun Call of Duty-esque level design results in a dull feeling. And once you realize that the levels are designed with the idea that you're going to use the turret to take out the tank, that you're going to grab the mantis to take out the energy spheres, that you're going to ground pound off that ledge, that you're going to use this weapon, that you're going to do this, that you're going to do that, you immediately gravitate towards what the game wants you to do because there's no real other effective way of pulling it off that'll be fun. The greatest drawback to this campaign, however, lies in its biggest flaw, the forced cooperative experience. Let's set aside the bullshit of the lack of split screen. We all know it's a lie, there's no reason they couldn't have done it. Sure, it's difficult to pull off, but there's kind of a glaring contradiction when the last game they released had split screen co-op and 60 FPS. How the fuck can you make that excuse when your last game did just that without a hitch? Anyway, the forced co-op is absolutely retarded. Sure, it's cool to play as different characters that come with different loadouts and even have their own unique heads up displays, but it adds absolutely nothing to the game whatsoever. No meaningful change was brought to the table with this function. When playing with friends, it feels literally no different than usual co-op, because in Halo 3, you played as different characters with different weapons. When you're playing solo, however, this function sucks. It adds nothing but an annoyance to the game. The command system was a cool idea, and I was really open to it because I'm a huge Republic Commando fanboy. Unfortunately, the AI is stupid as hell. They never do anything worthwhile, especially when you need their help the most. They get in the way, and their banter is so bland and uninteresting that I honestly just want them to shut the fuck up and disappear. I'm not opposed to the idea, but at the very least, it should be a choice. Not to mention, Dead Space 3's co-op worked in such a way where you could play it just like any other Dead Space game, but the co-op partner would only show up every once in a while in cutscenes and only interfere in the gameplay if you and a friend are intentionally playing co-op, which is exactly how this game should have been. The level design is clearly centered around the idea that friends should be able to play the campaign together. Maybe 343 should have thought about about releasing a campaign that didn't suck before revolving their entire game around this singular feature, or at least putting split screen in the game so friends could actually play together. The multiple weapon crates, extreme amount of vehicles, the wide areas filled with enemies, the multiple arbitrary paths, all of it is designed specifically for a co-op experience. But there needs to be some kind of equilibrium. You need to make sure that the solo experience is just as fun as co-op. It's in my opinion that co-op actually made Halo 5 worse. Rather than telling a competent and personal narrative with twists and turns, the game needed to revolve around two teams of four people with a cast of side characters around them, all interacting with one another as they experience the story. With so many characters, it's no wonder the development was so barren. Possibly the most damning issue of Halo 5 is the extreme lengths 343 went through in order to manipulate the consumer and trick them into believing that they were getting a vastly superior and incredibly different product than what was given. Now say what you will about 343's game making skills, you must admit that these guys are absolute geniuses when it comes to marketing. In fact, they're so good that even after multiple failed attempts at getting people to like them, they still generate a gigantic hype train. And they're so good at it that they can make a steaming pile of shit look like it's worth the best barest fuck of your time. Unfortunately, that shit doesn't settle well with me. Actually, it kinda slightly, maybe, pisses me right the fuck off. If I'm going to buy a game, I'm going to buy it based on what I see from gameplay, trailers, and Vidox. While the gameplay was all certainly directly from the game, the trailers and Vidox were complete lies. Take, for example, this stupid sack of shit. This guy blatantly lied about the length of Halo 5. He said that it would be twice as long as Halo 4. To put this into perspective, Halo 4, on normal difficulty, takes about six and a half to seven hours to complete, given that you're not sprinting around and skipping cutscenes and battles. Halo 5, however, took me seven hours to complete, on Legendary, without running past anything, without skipping cutscenes, and while collecting all of the audio logs. I had to play this game on its highest difficulty and collect everything just to get it to be as long as Halo 4 on normal. 
Not that Legendary difficulty is even in the slightest bit difficult on Halo 5. This is genuinely one of the most pitifully easy games I've ever experienced. But that's just outright lying. What about the manipulative marketing? Well, the brilliantly written Hunt the Truth audio logs hinted at a lot of stuff that we never saw in the game. Stuff like Chief being framed for killing people, Oni really fucking shit up, a human rebellion, government conspiracies. But absolutely none of that is in Halo 5. The whole searching for answers thing that 343 wanted to do was literally only in their marketing. You know from the first second that Chief is the good guy in this game. It makes zero attempt to make you think otherwise. Not to mention the whole Chief is in hiding thing was never touched upon. The mystery angle was completely absent. The feud between Chief and Locke was nowhere to be found. Urban warfare was absolutely nowhere in the game at all. The fight between Chief and Locke was fucking insulting. And this dark story that'll change the outcome of the Halo universe forever was literally the most blatant ripoff of Terminator and Mass Effect that I could have ever possibly think of. Cortana is Skynet. That's the best way to summarize this entire game. This is damn near as bad as the false advertisement for Destiny. While they never specifically ripped things out of the game, never sold missions as DLC that were already on the disc, or scammed all their purchasers into buying a product that was completely barren, their marketing was incredibly misleading, making everyone think it was going to be something that it could never be, because it was never competent enough to be as it was advertised. Aside from the poor design, forced co-op, bad story, and false advertising, the absolute lack of any form of challenge through 99% of this campaign is frankly insulting. You need to play this game on Legendary to get any kind of entertainment value from it whatsoever. Setting aside the fact that something as simple as scoring didn't come into the game until 6 months later, despite Halo 3 having it on day 1 in 2007, there's just no challenge here at all. I don't want to play a video game to have an easy time. Sure, some games can be fairly simplistic and still be really fun, but part of what makes Halo games fun is the brutal difficulty when you bump it up to legendary. Halo 2 is damn near unplayable on that setting. I would rather play Dark Souls on Frame Lost Topia than play Halo 2 on legendary again, much less with any of the challenge skulls on. Hell, even when playing Lasso, Halo 5 is only about as difficult as Halo Combat Evolved on legendary. Enemies are stupid as hell, they're weak, they're easily distracted, there's too many conveniently placed power weapons and vehicles that make it an easy time to plow through, and the warden boss fight comes down to you finding a glitched area or easy cover spot and sending all your allies at him, then shooting him in the face or in the weak area on his back. In fact, the only difficult part is this ungodly difficult final boss, where they had to throw three wardens at you, and after you survive the first two, instant one-hit kill turrets pop up out of Satan's asshole and prevent you from reaching any kind of crucial power weapons required to kill him. And at this point, it'll be a fucking miracle if you manage to keep even a single one of your teammates alive for this encounter, leading to more deaths in this one fight than in a single area of Dark Souls. Okay, maybe not that bad. But still, the only way 343 was able to make their game in the least bit challenging was to throw three of the exact same overpowered bosses at you at once, and then throw one hit kill turrets in at the end. Wow. Real intelligent, 343. I'm sure that took a whole lot of brain power to muster up something as revolutionary as that. Oh, but you know what the best part is? After I already suffered through and completed that shit-designed area, I found out you can skip the place entirely and not fight the wardens at all. What in the actual living fuck? <laughs> Halo 5 is, without a doubt, the biggest disappointment of a video game I've ever played since Destiny. While I love the multiplayer and even came to really enjoy Forge, the thing I cared about most, the rich and enthralling narrative, was completely butchered to hell. Nothing about this campaign is fun. It's literally the spitting image of what it means to be unfun. At this point, the story is so badly butchered to hell, with the pointless and shameless resurrection of a character that should have stayed dead, to the utter lack 
of character development, massive plot holes, lack of any competent exposition, and bland, uninteresting, and wholly unoriginal plot that I don't believe there's any possible way that 343 can come back from this. The only way that they could fix the Halo storyline in my mind is if they announced very publicly that Halo 5 is no longer canon, but 343 is too proud of themselves and their glitter splattered shit to do something that incredibly extreme. Brian Reed, take heart in knowing that you have single-handedly murdered an entire franchise with the worst story ever devised. You are, undoubtedly, one of the worst abominations that has ever dared to call himself a writer in all of mankind. Brian Reed needs to be fired. He has the intelligence of a fucking potato and an ego that makes Keemstar look tame by comparison. Now, is there a way for 343 to revive Halo's story? Can this narrative possibly be saved? To be honest, I don't know. It's so far out there at this point that I think it's incredibly far-fetched to think so, but I won't rule it out entirely. But hopefully they can learn from the errors I pointed out in this video, fix what they did wrong, and hire better writers that can do justice to the Halo universe. Either way, Halo 6 will be my last foray into this franchise. When Master Chief goes, I go too. This radical notion of keeping Halo around until year 2030 is absolutely absurd. Make something new, for fuck's sake. Let the series die with whatever dignity it has left, because 343 sure as shit doesn't give a fuck about this game's dignity. I'm the Dishonored Wolf. Thank you all for watching this video. Make sure to tell me your thoughts and opinions below and share it around if it piques your interest. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go staple my scrotum to a really hard place and test out its durability, so I guess if I never make a video again, well, you'll at least know what happened to me.